our next guest is a hugely successful and prolific songwriter, producer, and recording artist with as many Grammys as he has fingers. You can count them up yourself if you like. His band's new album is self-titled. It's called Bleachers. Please say hello to Jack Antonoff. <laughs> Good, how you doing? I'm doing well. You played Coachella uh, over the weekend. Yeah, I, it was I really good. Here. Was it fun? What'd you hear? I, I heard you played. I didn't get a review from anybody, really. But uh, my daughter was there. I just didn't ask her uh, okay. how it went. Yeah. No, it was, it was fantastic. It was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, I like playing festivals. They're opposite the headlining show. Why do you like playing a festival? It's just, it, it, we're more isolated all of us bands than we seem. Right, yeah. It's really insular, so when we go to the festival, it's nice, and then, like, um, everyone's trailers are around each other, and you, you say hi to people. Sometimes you say, I, I like your band, and... And they say, I like your band, or they don't, or... Most people are nice, but... Yeah, right. But yeah. Is this how you feel when you go to the comedy club, Jimmy? Um, no, no, <laughs> I don't really go to the comedy clubs that much, but... but... you people see each other more. Yeah, well, you know, you can't say you people. It's offensive to comedians. Yeah. They're very, you know, they're very, uh... You, you, know, you no. people have, like... <laughs> there's more, like, I feel like, uh, events. I, yeah, oh, charity events. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of charity events. I will say that I love being around a group of comedians, and if I'm at, even at, I'm at a party and there are a couple of comedians there, I will gravitate into the corner with those comedians and we'll talk the whole night and not talk to other people. I saw, yeah. you, at a, I saw you at a party last week. And who was I talking to? The Elvis, the guy who played Elvis. Oh, oh, uh, yeah, Austin Butler. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I did notice at, that I think there's more parties in L.A. There's no parties in New York that I get invited to. When I come here, I sometimes do things. What do you mean, do things? I feel like in California, there's more, like, there's things going on. If people, I, maybe it's because I live in New York. I've just sort of cut out everyone who I know. Okay. But you mean do things like you will do things, you'll do things. Because I thought you meant when you get to the party, you'll do things. And I was like, <laughs> what things are you doing? Does all this part get cut? Should we just start over? <laughs> like... <laughs> Watch this, ready? No, we will cut none of this. This is all going to be on. Yes. This if you is... don't cut it, then the transition works, because it's funny. And if you do cut it then, it, then it works for the transition. Coachella was so great. You're always producing. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so you're at Coachella, and you have... You are, uh, to be serious for a moment, and I, maybe this is embarrassing to you, but I know you, you won the Grammy Best Producer for three years. Why the f would that right? be embarrassing? No, well, <laughs> a little bit embarrassing. I don't know, maybe. No, it is. It is. No. I, 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 I get a sense that I might embarrass you. No, it is. So when you go to a festival and there's a whole bunch of bands there, you must have artists all the time come up to you and say they would love you to produce their record. And you obviously can't do that for everybody. So how do you handle that? How do you let them down gently? Or do you? Well, you know what the <laughs> truth is? Not to give like a joke answer, my, my time is like when I'm working on the Bleachers records and we're touring, like that's such a huge part of my life that um, a lot of the time I'm just there. So it's very easy to be like, oh, I, I, I do get asked to do stuff. And it's like, I would love to, but I just um, don't have tons of time because I'm on the road a lot. So a lot of the records I produce are ones that have been like uh, long relationships that have been in motion for a long period of time. And uh, for instance, uh, obviously you've worked with Taylor Swift, you worked with Lana Del Rey, you worked with Lord, with St. Vincent, with Chicks, with Florence and the Machine. What do you have against men? There aren't many men on, the, on that list. Is there something about you that um, you're more inclined to work with female artists? I feel like no, and I do work with a lot of men. Uh, two, they just, I don't know why they never make the list on these things, but there's a lot of men out there. Um, but I do feel like men in general have reached this point where they think admitting their, like, dissonance is the final buck. You know what I mean? I have no idea. Okay, like... <laughs> oh, I feel please. like a lot of men um, are like, I'm a disaster. 
whew, I did it. You know? <laughs> I still don't know. Okay, like, okay, hold on. Okay. Okay, like, I feel like, um... <laughs> is your dad around? My dad alive? Yeah. He, yeah, he okay. is. Yeah, yeah. Has he, over the past couple of years, had, like, a renaissance about, like, emotions and ayahuasca and stuff? <laughs> No, it's more like, it's more about knee surgeries and um, okay. ankle casts. Guillermo knows he's laughing too hard. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. So for my father, it's painkiller. Got it. OK, yeah. so bad. Like, I feel like a lot of, I was just talking to uh, my partner about this, how it's like a lot of men are like, like, oh, like, I'm so f***ed up, and I, I, I did this, and I feel this way, and phew, I did it. I said it, um, and then sort of missed the, the uh, Next part. So I feel I find men to be very oversensitive. The next part yeah. being the working on it part, and well, or just admitting it, they think it's enough. I think I'm talking about a certain kind of dad, not my dad, um, <laughs> your dad, but um, definitely not my dad. I guess. Well, actually, okay. So I do work with men, but I guess what I'm trying to articulate, and you'll have to. Will cut you lay this down too. while you do this? Let's yeah. let's get you. <laughs> Okay. Because we're going to go a little bit long. In fact, when you, <laughs> you're watching on TV, there is going to be an edit because we, but because I want to go through this whole thing. But now, if you're watching on YouTube right now, you're getting the whole damn thing. All okay. right, go Here's ahead. Thing. Yeah. I think men, there's two people that I think are, are almost too, <laughs> too oversensitive to even function. Mm -hmm. And it's men and members of the music industry. It's the it's the, the amount of sensitivity. It's sort of like watching Kanye. It's just like, oh my god. Like, which by the way, and Jimmy, you might like this because I know that you have your own relationship with sort of the the right and how you interact with them. And you're much closer to how I see these things than other people. Like I don't like going to people and you do this, you do this, blah, 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 blah. Because that's what they want, you know, this sort of type of oversensitive man. So I just do more of this like, um, like I would like if I saw Kanye I'd run up to him and be like, they did, the diaper, your, your, your diaper is so, we have to change your diaper. Your diaper needs to be changed. There's a huge problem. <laughs> and, I, and I think you do a little bit of this with some of your Trump work where like, <laughs> because the truth is, it's like, I'm not that offended, right? And so, I mean, I'm offended, but I'm not that offended. And so I don't like to like play this character of overly offended. I prefer to sort of up the trolling. So I think a lot about like, <laughs> Like, there was a man at the Delta Lounge with one of those shirts that was, like, you know, really just stupid and had one of those, like, bleeding American flags, which I'm yeah, sure yeah, yeah. And which, wherever, however you are, I don't care, but I don't know why a flag would bleed. You know what I mean? It's like, um, and I wanted to, in my head, I was just like, I wanted to rush up to him and start, like, touching him and be like, there's an amazing diaper room over there, and if we change the diaper now, we can make sure that it doesn't get caked up all over the body and it'll be better on the plane. You're absolutely right. Yeah. And by the way, <laughs> if we started, that was nice. <laughs> I'm gonna, you know what? I'm inspired by this, and I will tell you that you I do am. It. Gonna, I, each night, I am gonna try to work some comment about Trump wearing diapers into the conversation, yeah. and eventually, it will become part of the fabric of this country, and he will get. He will not be happy with it when it happens. In fact, he. We may even get him to the point where. He drops his pants to prove he isn't Doesn't wearing a diaper. diaper. Yeah. That would be great. Wouldn't that be a victory? I, 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 I do, I really, and I'm not gassing you here because I've talked about it with friends when you're not around. Um, <laughs> and you're never around except for today. Almost you're never, yeah. But you're one of the only people that I feel like is just sort of like, you know, like, like, we are funnier, so let's be funnier. Yeah, right, yeah, 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 right, yeah, 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 yeah. So let's, yeah, yeah, be, be, it's, yeah just it's, get him, yeah. Feel yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, well, I do take, I, th I appreciate that. It's very nice of you to say, but I do take pleasure in the idea that he might be hearing some of this stuff and it might make him crazy, which I know it does. Yeah. yeah. Well, and then, and I also, I hope that if God forbid he wins in November, you will come visit me in prison. I would love to, yeah. I'll come visit you. We'll do a, we'll do a big telethon. <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah, and then... Get all the bands together and all the comedians together. Yeah. And then we'll uh, form a community. Yeah, we'll have just like a, a big... Uh, then we'll all go to jail, too, I guess. Yeah, and, well, yeah. yeah. Well, at least we'll have fun. Well, listen, we could talk all night, but we got to hear some music from you. Yeah. You do have an album, and this is it right here. And I love the cover, by the way. It's excellent. That's, uh, I mean, that's like a, a vacation photo well, there, right there's there. A, there's a reason for it. Why? Because it's the first picture, not a joke, this is the first picture I've ever seen of myself where I just recognized myself. And I was doing a more serious shoot, and then at one point I just waved. And then when we got the contact sheets back, 
it just, I was like, oh, that's me, which isn't common, should be, but it isn't. And so I thought that that should be the cover. This is like the neighbor you want to have. Right there. Jack Ambrose. This is the neighbor you want to have. The neighbor, neighbor you want to have. Come over and troll you about your big, dirty diaper <laughs> tantrum. <laughs> Jack Antonoff, his band is called Bleachers. The album's called Bleachers. And we'll be right back with music from Bleachers. <laughs>